everybody, it's Brookie with Sniper Tarot, back with another magical walk and talk. And I am a thrifty girl. I had the feeling, I felt the pull, I felt the need to go to my local Goodwill for candles. And normally I go in there and I don't find anything at all, or they're like, they've been used, or they've been, you know, burned halfway and they cost like you know three bucks for a used candle for some reason something today said go to Goodwill and I did and I had the best luck I came away with I love tea lights and lo and behold here I found a bag of 50 citronella tea lights and guess how much? 99 cents. Oh yeah. And then I found the cutest little votive candle. 99 cents. Gets better. And then I found an unwrapped cute little floral candle that apparently burns for 35 hours. $1.59. I'm thrifty, so excited. It's a beautiful day here in West Virginia. It's nice and warm. The rain has kind of subsided. We had a lot of rain for a, almost a week, it seemed like. I'm wearing my uh, wireless headphones. May I take your call? I look like a telephone operator. Anyway, uh... I haven't done one of these in a long time. I'm vlogging, and uh, it's been a while. I've been very busy trying to get things going back on my channel. I'm doing daily tarot readings, and it's a motivational thing for me. I like to do them in the morning, uh, early in the morning, and it also helps motivate me in some regard. And... Uh, yeah, it's, it's a very nice way to start the day. And throughout my day, I will remember things from the daily tarot reading, which I will find will start to apply to my own daily life. So that's pretty fascinating as well. Also came out with your June love highlights. So I hope everybody's enjoying them. And uh, going to be coming out with your monthly general readings for June here shortly. This earbud seems like it wants to pop out. But anyway, so that's very exciting. So I'm trying to get a lot of things done on my channel as well as with my tarot biz. And I just finished up the free tarot class that I offered back at the end of March, which was very, very positive. And I'll probably be coming out with another free tarot class, uh, probably a different type of topic or subject in regards to the tarot. So that's exciting too. And uh, here's a, a little shot of little Fred. He's like, feed me. Um, I was going to take you guys down to uh, a little creek, but the rain has really muddied the waters and the water is super duper high so I was like do I want to risk that do I don't want to fall in the in the creek today not really so anyway I wanted to talk about a couple of things actually this is like a magical sit and talk and I'm in the shade uh, I wanted to talk about a couple of things today that I've been thinking about when it comes to doing tarot readings and sometimes this will happen or this will occur how do you separate your own energies from not leaking into another person's tarot reading for example reading for a client or for a friend and having the reading not show up to be all about you and because I do prefer to meditate and shuffle the cards myself, I used to have the client 
in person shuffle the cards uh, sometimes people that are very unaware of how to shuffle uh, will tend to shuffle them all over the place because I don't read them reversed and then I have to put them back together <laughs> or they don't shuffle them as as well so I prefer to shuffle them now how does my energy of my life or perhaps a situation in my life not transfer into the reading and I've only seen that happen to me a couple of times when I was reading for very close friends or potentially for people that perhaps I knew a little bit about their lives but yet something in my life at the time was coming through that was very strong and so of course I'd stop the reading and reshuffle it does tend to happen it can happen can it happen here on YouTube doing general readings possibly you know when I read for my sign of guys I got cut off with a phone call uh, when I read for my sign of Pisces going back to the YouTube readings you know sometimes it resonates with me personally because Pisces is my Sun sign and many times because my rising sign or my ascendant is cancer that resonates with me sometimes as well but I try not to insert myself <laughs> into doing general readings I let my mind go and very rarely do I see a reflection or something that I think really resonates in my own life but many times I can very much identify how or what perhaps for example Pisces is feeling or Pisces is going through which is very interesting and also a friend of mine noted one time because she loves to get on YouTube and watch other readers how sometimes different readers will have kind of the same context in their readings in terms of the energies or what's going on and it ha there seems to be a synchronicity of some kind that does occur which is very fascinating to watch and that's something that I can't explain <laughs> but it is very fascinating to watch sometimes the connection that other readers will have with other readers in terms of the reading for that week or the reading for that month or the reading for that year etc so yeah it's very very interesting there's a lot of different dynamics that go on with that but anyway and you know I've I always want to do something to give back and because I do the free terror uh, classes which I think is very important because when I was learning how to read I didn't purchase a course uh, of course the internet my tarot reading studies started pre-internet basically almost uh, I purchased books, of course, and studied, but I never spent money on a tarot course. So for me, if anybody wants to learn how to read the tarot cards or any kind of divination system, I think it's a great way to give back and to offer it for free. And uh, I just enjoy doing it because giving back and helping to serve other people how to learn is very uh, gratifying in a lot of ways so hopefully I'll be coming out soon with some other type of free tarot course in the near future so right now I moved I'm sitting I'm sitting in the in the yard uh, under a bunch of trees which kind of provide a shady canopy and uh, hopefully I can take you guys somewhere with me. I want to get one of those things that you can put in your car on the windshield to set my phone in because I'm using my phone a lot to do videos and uh, 
I need one of those holster things. Uh, I love to watch other vloggers talking while they're driving because for some reason you seem you seem more focused on the road or you kind of like things come out more clearly. I don't know why I can't explain it. But anyway, so yeah, giving back I think is very, very important on uh, anything that you do. However, I'm trying to kind of curtail uh, doing free readings. I did a lot of free readings in terms of giveaways. Um, sometimes I would pick and choose at random somebody on my Facebook page to win a free reading. I've kind of cut back on that um, only because you give so much of your time, so much of your energy, and so much thought into a reading that the free readings is great, but then you never really hear from them again. <laughs> and that's fine, that's fine, but at the same time, you are kind of giving of yourself and I was doing it so much that I kind of felt I wasn't really feeling wanting to do that anymore and I've talked to a lot of readers who refuse to do that and I totally understand why they would not want to do that and I've also kind of cut back on my boundaries when it comes to doing free readings or doing readings for people that I know. Um, and this happens frequently. It happens a lot with uh, people in this field. I'll get strange emails from complete strangers asking me to read for them or, or tell them what I think about a certain situation or, you know, well, you must be psychic. You can tell me what's going to happen. And, and it's kind of like I attune it to you're providing a service. It is a business and it's a profession and not to treat it like it's a hobby. Um, you wouldn't expect your friend who's a plumber to come over and fix your plumbing for free. So I equate that with what I do is I can't, I have to learn how to say no delicately, no, I can't read for you or I can't read for this person right now or, or kind of feel like you're, you know, on demand and, and because you give so much of yourself spiritually and it also takes away from you physically. After a reading, many times I get hungry. I feel drained depending upon how heavy the reading was. And I also try to practice grounding and centering in different spiritual techniques to not allow drainage to happen. But draining, emotional draining or feeling psychically drained is very, very typical and very, very common doing spiritual readings. And I don't think people are aware of that. Uh, that's something that comes with it. So I try not to, whoa, almost fell over. I try, I try not to allow myself to say yes to that as much anymore. Um, and it's hard. It's a hard fine line to walk. But then again, I'm not going to expect my plumber friend to come over to my home and, you know, do a job that may cost a couple hundred bucks for free. So it's, I equate it to that. So if I'm doing a free reading for a friend or a friend's family member or et cetera, that goes on for 30 minutes, that's money that's out the gate that I'll never receive and that I can use for my family. So it's a very delicate, fine line. And I'm learning to pull back the rain on doing that and not feeling guilty and saying no. So that's something that is, is difficult sometimes for me. But it's all good. It's all good in the hood, you know. 
but anyway, I think many people uh, trust in your gift, but at the same time, you can't allow other people to treat it as if it's a hobby uh, or to come across as it's just a hobby. And especially when you read for people for the first time, whether it's at, you know, a festival, of course, I've never done a festival, or in public, or on, on a whim somewhere, and you happen to have a pack of tarot cards in your purse, uh, they never had a reading before, they come across as a bit skeptical. And then you're giving of yourself, and your time, and your energy, and you kind of feel like you're um, in the spotlight, and it's a lot of pressure for tarot readers to put them themselves through to perform is the norm and I'm trying not to do that that much lately it's hard for me to say no especially if people have a great need or a great want and uh, so it's a very very fine balance for me and you know I try to live a spiritually based life and when stress has come in, uh, if stress has come in from relationships, or if stress has come in from family situations, or if stress has come in from whatever's going on, it can really take away from what you practice and from what you preach. And I try to live a very open, give it up to God, spiritual life. And the last nine months of my life personally has been very stressful at times. And I'm starting to come out of that uh, in regards to giving up myself to other people first and not thinking about my needs or thinking about my wants and kind of being a sacrificial lamb for certain situations and it takes away from myself and it takes me away from my channel or it takes me away from doing something like a daily tarot reading. So I kind of feel like I live in between two worlds sometimes and that's something that maybe other tarot readers can identify with. Living in two different worlds is kind of difficult sometimes. You walk around in the physical world, but at the same time, if you're intuitive or if you're empathic, you're picking up, like this radar is going around you and you're picking up all these different energies wherever you are. And you're also noticing things that people don't notice. And, and it's hard to describe to other people. And it's also not to come across as being kind of crazy. <laughs> So yeah, that's kind of, especially if you're, uh, you know, and people in your life are not understanding or don't understand what the hell you do uh, and don't get it. So yeah, that's why I'm so glad I found YouTube because I've met other people that do get it, which is nice. That's a nice validation. So, yeah, this is my magical walking set, <laughs> or my magical talking set. Uh, so, yeah, there's just a few things I wanted to talk about today. And uh, hopefully, and I have a good feeling about the month of June, I think there's a lot of things that are going to be coming up on the horizon for a lot of people. I think it's going to be a great inspirational time. For a lot of people, I think new doorways and new directions are going to be opening. New pathways are going to be opening for other people, um, people in general. And I really think that we need to be inspired. I really think that we need to have validation. I really think we need to have community uh, right now. So it's very important. And yeah. Those are my thoughts. My thoughts, y'all. But anyway, I will be back very, very soon for another magical talk and set. Hopefully, it'll be a magical walk and talk uh, somewhere 
far more interesting than my yard. So I hope you guys enjoyed this magical talk and sit. Please leave me your comments below if you'd like to share any stories with me. Give it a thumbs up. Uh, share and subscribe. And thank you guys so much for watching. Many blessings. And I'll speak to you soon. Kitty, kitty.